Hello again everyone. In this video I'll be making sodium peroxide for use in an upcoming video. This reaction can be extremely hazardous. Sodium metal is itself dangerous. Molten sputtering sodium metal is extremely dangerous. This experiment should only be performed by a trained chemist. I began this experiment by cutting some pieces of pure sodium metal and wiping off any oil that was used in the extruding process. The first time I did this, I cut them in small pieces. Later I found that there was no need and one large piece would work just fine. My setup is very simple. I use a 100 milliliter crucible in a ring stand with a Bunsen burner to heat. My oxygen source is from my glass torch. The torch would allow me to regulate the flow of O2 into the reaction vessel. I place a 13 gram piece into the crucible and began to heat it slowly with the Bunsen burner. Sodium metal melts at 97.7 degrees Celsius, a couple degrees lower than water. So it does not take a long time for all the sodium to become liquid. No extra oxygen is being allowed into the reaction vessel at this time. I find that flooding the reaction vessel with oxygen can cause small explosions when the reaction begins. This causes molten sodium to spray everywhere, and it's quite a mess to clean up. Continue to heat the sodium until it ignites. Then quickly remove the heat source as the rest of the reaction is self-sustained. I now turn on a very small stream of oxygen to the reaction vessel. It is very important not to overdo the O2 as this will heat the reaction to the decomposition point of the peroxide. Plus, too much O2 causes a lot of sputtering. If the reaction looks as if it's getting out of hand or too hot, I place a lid over the vessel and turn off the O2. It's very important to regulate the heat as sodium peroxide decomposes at 675 degrees C. In some cases, I left the lid on for several minutes to allow the vessel to cool down. Upon removing the lid, the reaction started right back up. After a few minutes, the reaction will slowly come to an end. If you quickly look into the vessel, you will see that everything has a dark gray color. But if you continue to watch, the dark gray will slowly become a striking yellow as it cools. Here you can see some of the dark gray, though most has changed to the yellow. Here is a crucible after it's cooled to room temp. You can see that most of the gray is gone and we are left with a bright yellow color of sodium peroxide. This is not however pure. Sodium peroxide forms a conjunction with sodium oxide and I know of no way to chemically separate them. Using a sharp object, I break all the peroxide up and quickly store it in an airtight bottle. Sodium peroxide reacts with moisture in the air to form hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. Sodium oxide also reacts with moisture in the air to form sodium hydroxide. Both compounds when dropped in water react violently. The heat of the reaction decomposes some of the hydrogen peroxide. Since there is always a possibility that some small amount of unreacted sodium could also be forming hydrogen, care is taken to be sure no ignition source is available to cause an explosion. If the sodium peroxide is dropped into water with some manganese dioxide to decompose the hydrogen peroxide that forms, a much more vigorous reaction takes place. Thanks for watching.